Welcome AP Chemistry parents and guardians to the AP Chemistry Back to School Night video. I'm very proud of you right now because if you are watching this video, that means you are about to complete part two of your homework assignment. Hopefully you've completed the survey by now. Well, you can have done it because the link is given to you right at the end of the survey for this video. So in this video, I want to cover all the things that we would have talked about on Back to School Night, but I want to do it here. My class is about collaboration and conversation as much as possible. Therefore, I want to talk to you on Back to School Night, not talk at you at Back to School Night. So I'd like to spend those eight minutes together to be as meaningful as possible. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover everything that I would have talked about before, and I'm going to talk about it all here. If you have any questions when we're all done, please use any of these forms of communication in order to get in touch with me. So obviously school email is fine. I have found that from time to time the school email will go down and I won't be able to get to messages. So the Gmail one is preferred. It, Gmail never goes down and I can get it on my phone instantly. Every time I get an email from Gmail, my phone buzzes, much to my wife's dismay. So please, if you have an emergency or something important, send me the Gmail account. Don't send it to school. I'll get it a lot faster for you. Our class website can be found at mass.unco.edu slash Moodle. Moodle is a learning management system. It makes it for a more robust classroom experience. So instead of taking up time in class with simple like five point quizzes and check quizzes and things like that everything's going to be done through Moodle so your kids will actually be completing some of their work entirely online in order to free up as much time in class to really tackle questions and the hard textbook problems and the uh, AP practice questions that we've got to go through I am the social media guy. If you don't know anything about me already, I'm not only that, but I'm also the tech guy. I'm the Google guy. I'm the little bit of everything guy. Basically, if it, ha it looks shiny and has electricity in it, I'm interested in it. So you can get me on, if you're on Twitter, you can tweet me at Dare to Chem, or you can find me on Google Plus by looking up Mark Siegel, or Instagram, Dare to Chem again on Instagram. And I post a lot of pictures of your kids' work to Instagram because we do so many labs in the class that I like to take pictures a lot, and I post them out. Our hashtag is chemisawesome, C-H-E-M, is awesome, all one word. And so you can actually search for it on, on Instagram and find the pictures from our class. Uh, like I said, Twitter, I have a Snapchat, but you guys probably don't use Snapchat too much. I don't think parents use Snapchat. So, And then lastly, you can get me on my uh Google Voice number, 732-456-6272, and that will ring both my house and phone. So if my son picks up, I apologize in advance, but he has a tendency to scream into the phone, but he'll he'll make sure the phone gets to me um, if you just ask for Mr. Siegel. Or you can send me text messages. Even your kids will send me text messages because texts are faster than email. So I can get questions answered a lot faster and get those connections and relationships built with your kids than faster than I can with email. So, <clears throat> Now, the purpose of AP Chemistry is to simulate a first-year college chemistry class. The problem with it is college does in two classes what we do in one. So typically in college, they will see their lecture professor three times a week for an hour each and they'll see their lab professor their lab teacher for a lecture and a three-hour class the problem is we don't have all that time we get about 200 minutes per week if we're lucky um, maybe 230 per week so we're really short on time to cover the exact same number of topics that college does I will also do about 14 labs with them all in preparation for this AP exam the labs we focused on inquiry, meaning that not all of them are going to be cookie cutter, follow these steps, and you're done. A lot of them will be. There are no procedures. You have to write your own procedures. And But no matter what, every lab will be about collaboration. Every lab is going to be done with a partner or partners. And the reason for that is we learn better together. Together. Now, I know some people like to do more work than others. However, this is AP Chemistry, and you need to step up and take ownership of what's going on. So I'm really going to push the kids to work collaboratively on everything they're doing. Last year, uh, College Board came out with a new curriculum and a new exam. The exams, uh, the curriculum's not bad, but the exam sh saw a drop in scores. Um, Last year was the first time that I had under 85% passing, meaning a three or higher, on the exam for my class. Now, that doesn't mean my kids failed the exam. It just means that they shifted down. So, 
but that was across the board. We they saw thousands of kids, thousand fewer kids that getting fives. Fives typically about 15% of the population of who take the test get a five. Last year was only 10. Now, there's 160,000 people who take the exam, so 5% of 160,000 people is actually a pretty large number. And so there was this huge shift downwards simply because the test was un it was brand new. No one was ready. For, no one was truly prepared as they were for the old exam, which was very old. So um, it's a learning process. It's a growth process. But no matter what, my focus is not on that test first. My focus is on getting your kids ready for college. A lot of colleges have said that they're not even accepting AP scores anymore, or they're only accepting fives. Well. With only 15% out of 160,000 kids getting fives, the chance of your kid getting a five is very small. So I want to make sure that they can walk into that college level chemistry class and ace it. And a number of my students have gone on to be student assistants or student instructors for their freshman college chemistry class. And that's what I'm hoping for your kid when this is all done. Now. My expectations are developing skills. Skills first, not content. We can relearn content, but skills take a long time. So we're going to focus a lot on skills during the course of the year. I'm going to show them a method that can work in a lot of situations, not just one situation. I want to create a learning environment that will challenge every kid regardless of ability. Some kids are coming from all honors and AP classes. Some kids are coming from all CP classes from last year. I've got some juniors and I've got some seniors. So I have a little bit of everything. Some kids had me, some kids had other chemistry teachers. So I want to make sure I have an environment that works collaboratively, but it challenges everybody. So the best kid and the worst kid are going to be challenged as much as possible and, and they're going to push themselves as much as they want to be, as that much as they want to. My goals here are to create critical thinkers. I want kids to look at the chemistry that we're working with and say, okay, how can I tackle that problem now? Not, I don't know how to do this. I want them to see problems as challenges. I want them, I'm going to give them problems specifically that I know they can't solve. I want to see how their brain works and get them really thinking. I'm also going to do this in an environment that is, has a safety net under them at all times. So I want them to, under to adopt this dare to fail philosophy. I want them to know that it's okay to make mistakes. Kids have forgotten how to make mistakes. They want to get perfect scores. They want to have the answer up front. They want to know what should be there. And I don't care about that. I care about what you got and being able to explain why you got it. But at the heart of everything we're doing, I want them to find a love of science and a love of chemistry. That's my goal. We, for some reason, kill the love of experimentation out of kids. My seven-year-old who's going into second grade this year loves experiments. Even my four-year-old does it. When I finish one of my monster energy drinks, he turns to me and goes, Daddy, can we do a experiment? And because I used to, I do experiments sometimes with soda cans and he loves it. Every time he sees a soda can, he immediately wants to do an experiment with it. They love science. They love learning. And somewhere, science became ugh, chemistry. No, I don't want it to be that. I want them to truly love coming to class all the time and love learning. Now, we're going to do things very differently. Some students, I, I encourage a paperless classroom. So some students are going to do their homework on whiteboards. AP students love to work on whiteboards. And the reason for it is you can erase it, mistakes, and it erases it from existence. It's not like a paper where you, when you erase it with an eraser, it still has that ghost image of their mistake left behind. Whiteboards, for some reason, kids love to use the whiteboards because it wipes away everything clean. We will do labs with food. Yes, I use food in chemistry, in AP chemistry as well as CP and honors. Um, and we will take all of our information down on computers and on um, Chromebooks. Expect to see your kid's cell phone in the, in the lab all the time because that's how we're going to document our learning. AP students are required to document learning with pictures and video. That's part of their lab grade. They need to learn how to document more than just typing words into a data table. Some kids like to take their notes on whiteboards and then take pictures of it. That's encouraged. It doesn't have to be one way in my classroom. It could be any way that makes the kid comfortable. This is from my AP class directly. A lot of students will have a cell phone open, Googling one thing, 
typing something else on the Chromebook, sitting in the bungee chairs in a nice, comfortable learning environment. That's the situation that I want. I want kids to feel comfortable in my classroom, to learn, to use tools, and to have fun doing it all. My kids take selfies. Now, this is in my AP class, but I want to show you the type of person that I am. Is my kids take selfies. This was my TED Ed Club, and we took a global selfie. And my the point of me showing you this picture is we are going to connect to a, a global environment. Last year, we collaborated with a school in Indiana on our AP Chemistry Labs where they wrote joint lab procedures and joint analyze the data. We're going to keep doing that again this year. We're going to connect with kids all over the world trying to see that our influence goes far beyond just Middletown. My classes are featured in news articles. So the, a journalist came in and did an article for Spirit Magazine, which is Southwest Airlines uh, in-flight magazine. Half a million people read this article called Flip Out, which is about my chemistry classroom in Middletown South. I wrote a book, I wrote a chapter in a book called Flipping 2.0 about teaching and about how to flip classrooms and about how to use video like this for instruction. Much more interesting in my other videos, don't, don't, don't worry. My classroom is a beta tester. I have software companies that are contacting me saying, hey, can you test out this program with your kids or what about this app or are you, want, are you willing to try this new, this new piece of equipment we've got? So I, again, I focus on skills and learning not the content first. And the reason for it is you can apply skills and learning anywhere. You can't apply content knowledge everywhere. So that's kind of me, my philosophy and everything like that. So let me get down to the brass tacks. Who is Mr. Siegel? So <clears throat> this is my 15th year as an educator. I say educator and not teacher. And the reason for that is teachers get up there and teach. Educators learn while they're teaching. And that's kind of what I do at the same time. I as much a teacher as I am a learner. This will be my 10th year teaching AP Chemistry, but only my second at in Middletown. But it's my fourth year in Middletown as part of the Mid-South Nation. I love the environment that, that is in Middletown. It's an amazing community, fantastic parents, fantastic kids, fantastic teachers. It's overall one of the best places I've ever worked. I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry, so everyone always wonders, oh, does he actually know chemistry? Yeah, I've got it. I've gone through the classes. Um, I've taken them all. So... But I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted to be a professor. I never wanted to do chemistry in a lab. So I always wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a teacher since I was eight. And my high school math teacher, my high school calculus teacher, told me that never major in education. Major in something else so you have something to fall back on. You never know if teaching is going to be right for you. And I said, OK. So I majored in chemistry at Case Western Reserve University, which is in Cleveland. I had a wonderful time there greatest experience. I love the Midwest. Um, came back, to, always knew I was coming back to New Jersey anyway, came back and started teaching. Had the job teaching before I even graduated college, which was awesome. I have a master's degree in educational leadership from Kane. I am the school's Relay for Life advisor and I am the school's TED Ed Club advisor. And the TED Ed Club is one of only 150 clubs in the world like this. So it's an amazing experience to be part of not only working with fantastic kids that I have, but also being part of this global community of educators and students who are coming together and speaking their mind and doing projects and all that kind of stuff. But getting down to it, now you've heard my voice, now you let's see my face. Okay, so there I am. That's me. I had this great opportunity to get, and I got invited to the Google Teacher Academy in Mountain View, California, which is right at Google's headquarters. And I spent two days there this summer working with educators from all over North America, doing great things, getting great ideas. And from the first day of school, we're going to start using those ideas that I gained. Um, it was an amazing experience. You can see, like I said, I am Googled out. I have Google everything. I even have a Google tie. I'm wearing my Google tie, which unfortunately is crooked. I just noticed while I'm looking at this picture. So I have this crooked tie in my picture. That's wonderful. I wonder if I can Photoshop that. Um, <clears throat> but that was me this summer. Um, these are my boys. I said I have a seven and four year old. This was their souvenir coming back from the Google Academy. I stopped at the Google store and I bought them Android, you know, the operating system for phones, Android superhero costumes, and they love them. Of course, my four year old, it's so long, it's like, uh, it, it's like an apron on him. It hangs on the floor about a foot. So he's got a, a little time to grow into it too. Uh, but they wonder if they're, t they're doing their superhero pose here. My wife and I take the philosophy of we want our kids to have great experiences. You can always buy stuff. 
but you can't always have an experience. And so we try to give them experiences as much as possible. So this was us after Bubble Palooza in East Brunswick. And it's like the color run, but it's all with bubbles. And you can see that we are we were colored up all over the place. They had these huge bubble machines. But anytime we have the chance to, to do something different with our kids, we try to. So the, after um, I was speaking in Buffalo this summer in August, and on our way back, we drove through uh, Corning, which has the Corning Museum of Glass, and decided to go and get the boys the experience of doing glass blowing. So they actually, they now they didn't get the uh, the person was there and they put the glass the liquid glass in there, but the boys actually got to blow on the pipe and blow their own glass sculptures, and we have their glass sculptures sitting on our mantle, and it was an amazing experience for the whole family for that. But it's all about experiences because we, it's learning, it's not content. Um, I'm the guy in school who leaves random post-it notes all over the school telling people that they're beautiful and that they're awesome and that they're doing great things and I try and inspire others to do theirs. So mine were the yellow ones and the other colors were people who came in and asked me for post-it notes and said, can I do it too? So this was the kind of the cool thing that we were getting involved with. I'm the guy who convinced Mr. Ranella to get duct taped to the wall for Relay for Life. It was a great cause. $300 raised all went to uh, American Cancer Society and Relay for Life. But that's me. I'm the guy who thinks a little bit differently and, and convinces people to do absolutely crazy things. Outside my door is my Words of Awesome whiteboard. So my philosophy is everything should be awesome. So I have Words of Awesome. I have Chem is Awesome. I try to get the kids to look up a little bit more. Too often they walk through the hallways with their heads in their phones or looking down at their shoes and they're not interacting even with the people they're walking next to they're not interacting with them and so I my whiteboard is high and I see quotes that I love and I post them up there and sometimes they're silly and sometimes they're weird and there's sometimes a little bit of, of everything but it's the hope is it puts a smile on their face and makes them look at the world a little bit differently as part of the TED Ed Club, we, each of us had to produce, had to come up with an idea that we wanted to pursue. And my idea is to get people to see the awesome that is around them. And hopefully, I've put a smile on your face, and I've made you a little bit happy. And and I I, I love teaching, and I love chemistry, and I love working with the AP kids because they're so motivated and they're so gung ho about learning. And uh, this is going to be a great year. And I look forward to talking to each one of you on Back to School Night. I'm sure you have questions. I would love to get them all. We have eight minutes, so together I'm back to school night. So we're going to pound through all those questions. If you have anything in advance that you want to say, please do not hesitate to call me, text me, email me, tweet me, hit me up on Google+, whatever you want to do. Get in touch with me. I love to interact with parents, and uh, I look forward to working with all of you and your kids especially during the course of this school year. Thank you very much for listening.